Okay, good. Well, um, first, I want to thank the organizers of this meeting and Professor Ella for inviting me um, to this program. Uh, I am deeply honored to be here to share some words with, with this wonderful group. So um, <clears throat> uh, today, I would like to talk about research to address inequities caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. And so I'd like to first ask a question uh, on, on, on the poll here. So regarding the pandemic of 1918, the following is off, often stated regarding that pandemic flu. The virus does not discriminate, it hit the rich and poor alike. So please vote, true or false? And we'll give a few seconds for, for you to vote. Right, we don't see this in real time, so I think we'll close the poll in about 15 seconds, something like that. All right, so uh, what uh, could you show the results? Okay, so 62% um, said true and 38% said false. So oh, almost even, but most people are saying that the, um, it hit the rich and poor alive. I think the, uh, the issue is um, actually, what do we mean by, by the word hit? Um, um, does the virus not discriminate? Well, I think we could all rest assured that the virus does not discriminate and, and that, uh, but the issue is people's circumstances when uh, they are exposed to the virus. So uh, these are some, some research from the 1918 pandemic. We, we see here that, um, uh, we see this slide here that uh, this is the incidence and we see this curve here is the poor and the very poor and the well-to-do and the moderate, and we see that the incidence is much higher in the poor and the very poor. Um, if we see this slide here, this slide represents mortality, and we see the economic status of the household, well-to-do, moderate, poor, and very poor, and we see that mortality of the very poor is much higher. So it's, it's actually data that, that are very similar to the data being generated in the pandemic flu of 2020. So, so the issue is what, what are the sources of the um, disparity um, for uh, doing pandemics? And I think we could um, boil it down to three different categories. Uh, one, there are differences in social positions based on income, wealth, education, occupation, race, and ethnicity. And we have disparities in exposure to the influenza virus. Essentially, the poor and people from the lower economic strata of society find it very difficult to social distance. Uh, there are disparities in the susceptibility to contracting the influenza. People from the lower economic groups have um, uh, lower immune systems. And then there are disparities in treatment once disease has developed. Also, there are disparities in access to health services. So all of this adds up to unequal levels of illness and death. And essentially we have differences in the social context and also in the policy context. And so what I want to introduce before I go to the 
me to my slides is we, we have a difference between equality and equity. What is the difference between equality and equity? So in this slide, we see equality means equal treatment, people should have equal resources and equal opportunities. However, equity recognizes that each person has different circumstances and allocates the exact resources and opportunities to reach equal outcomes. Essentially, because of the different circumstances, even if people have equal resources, they may not have equal outcomes. So let me, um, for those people who like pictures, this slide shows the difference between equality and, and equity. And um, so what we have here is um, we have people with equal, whoops, sorry. We have people with equal resources to have the same boxes in order to see this baseball game. However, uh, not everybody has the same circumstances and we see there's a difference in height. So in order to enhance equity, we give more resources to people who have different circumstances. And so now there are equal outcomes. Now, this slide, what's wrong with this slide in trying to demonstrate the difference between equality and equity? Well, the issue is that, well, one could say that um, this, this person here uh, needs more resources, not because of social circumstances, but because of a difference in height. So this slide is not perfect to demonstrate the issue between equality and equity. So essentially, uh, we're, we're looking at concerns with so social circumstances and policy and not necessarily biology. So this slide, I like this slide better um, because here we see um, people with the, with the same height and they have equal resources, okay? But this person here is, doesn't have the same outcome as the other people. And, and the reason for that is because of a concern with so, social circumstances. So this lower level here represents inequities due to social circumstances. And because of the issue here with social circumstances, this person needs more resources in order to have an equal outcome. And so essentially, um, social systems are not naturally inequitable, but are rooted in discriminatory practices and beliefs. Equity means an absence of avoidable differences among groups of people. And equity is a solution for addressing unjust, imbalanced social systems. And well, let me, um, let me, oh, so here's another slide showing socially disadvantaged neighborhoods. Here we have two neighborhoods with equal community resources. So we have equality, but we have inequities because this neighborhood does not have equal outcomes. So in order to have equal outcomes, we need more community resources for 
this neighborhood here. Now, be that as it may, not everyone believes that equity is a just solution. This article from a recent Wall Street Journal, equity is a mandate to discriminate, essentially saying that uh, giving more resources uh, to people in uh, different social circumstances is actually a mandate to di discriminate. And we have um, other uh, sayings from, from this newspaper uh, saying that the, um, um, uh, let's see now here, um, said America's founders drew on those roots declaring it was self-evident that all men are created equal and, uh, and there is a concern that claims for equal treatment are so deeply rooted in US history. It is why radical claims for unequal treatment must be carefully buried in word salads praising equity and so social justice. Um, also, um, if the results are not equal, they assume unequal opportunity. In gen, um, uh, there is a concern that uh, the reason why we have unequal outcomes is because uh, there are differences in the work, uh, work ethic and effort to achieve the unequal outcome. So there, there is this um, running disagreement as to do we have different outcomes because of social circumstances or do we have unequal outcomes because of different effort? That will always be a, a running battle. However, let's assume that the reason why we have unequal outcomes is because of unjust discriminatory mechanisms that affects people in the lower social economic groups. Um, so uh, based on experiences with previous pandemics, it is reasonable to assume that pandemic influenza can cause case fatality rates for some groups that are significantly higher than the rates of higher risk groups. It may become evident during a pandemic that a particular demographic group or groups with compounded social vulnerabilities may prove to be at exceptionally at high risk of death. So why, why address inequities? What is fairness? So essentially what we have, if we fail to take steps to mitigate health disparities, our society will look different at the end of the pandemic. Who will be missing? because of disproportionate death due to disproportionate impact of the pandemics. And essentially what we have from Martin Luther King, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality 
tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all of us indirectly. So where, what are the threats from the pandemic that causes unequal outcomes? Well, we have the, the um, direct health impacts from the, from the virus. We have disproportionate impact from public health measures and the health systems. And we have disproportionate economic impacts as well. This um, slide shows the change in employment due to the pandemic in this past year. We have the change in jobs or employment between the wealthiest and the bottom level of society, we see that the lower paid jobs in the service sector were permanently lost among the poorer people. And we see that the return to employment was much lower in the bottom 25% of our society. So essentially, the again, the concern is the disproportionate impact of the virus. The COVID-19 disproportionately affect the poor, minorities, and a broad range of vulnerable populations. The collateral effect of the pandemic due to the global economic downturn and social isolation and movement restriction measures are unequally affecting those in the lower power strata of our societies. So the goal is to decrease the disparities in the COVID-19 case fatality rates, which disproportionately affect vulnerable populations. Essentially, social distancing is a privilege. Not everyone could social distance. Think about multi-generations living in a small house. How could they social distance? And also there's inequities in testing due to lack of access. And so we have to consider the social environmental context. So one way to address the in inequities is to do research to find out exactly what is happening, what is the context, and how could we change social policy in order to address these inequities. And one way is to do what's called implementation research, the promise and challenges in addressing inequities. So um, in this past year, this slide shows several headlines of research addressing inequities that's happening during the pandemic. Uh, so addressing health inequities through implementation research, there are three different paradigms. One paradigm is to use existing data or obtain new data to understand what drives disparities and how they can be overcome. The second paradigm is to include populations with health inequities in new implementation research. Or the third paradigm is to focus exclusively 
on populations experiencing inequities. So how can implementation research help address inequities? So there are four things to think, think about. Implementation research provides a framework to identify the causes of gaps in care and outcomes. The research could help us understand contextual factors which impact access, uptake, and quality. And then once we have identified the courses and understand the specific contextual factors, that could be transformed into actionable knowledge. And then implementation research could help adapt and scale up interventions that have been proven successful in other settings. So um, advancing health disparities research within the healthcare system needs a conceptual framework, which is uh, shown in this slide here. So we see that implementation research could help detect um, essentially define health disparities, define who are the vulnerable groups, measure disparities in vulnerable populations. And then once we define who are the vulnerable groups, we could now understand the contextual factors identify determinants of health disparities at the following level, the patient, provider, clinical outcome, and the healthcare system. And then once we have all this information, then we could develop policies to help reduce the disparities. We could intervene, evaluate, translate, and change policy. So these are the three phases of disparities research agenda. So let me, um, so in terms of identifying, this slide shows all, a list of all of the potential vulnerable groups, women, older persons, adolescents, persons with disabilities, in, um, in the, in the, where's my slide? Uh, oh, what happened? Oh, I see. Uh, migrants, minorities. So we could identify the vulnerable groups. And then in terms of understanding, we could understand the origins of the health and healthcare disparities at all the different levels, patient factors, the clinical encounter, provider factors, and also the healthcare system factors. Essentially, the healthcare system responds to the pandemic, but there could be inequities caused by the healthcare system response to the pandemics, which needs to be changed. So in terms of understanding, we need to understand through research, the contextual factors in the external environment uh, and individuals, families and health systems. So, uh, so, uh, an example that's happening now with the vaccine distribution, uh, a title from a recent editorial, Equity Left Behind. Essentially, 
we have all these policies and how to distribute the vaccine. Um, however, uh, we, we, uh, we have to understand why vulnerable groups are left behind. They don't have the means to access the vaccine um, in, in their society. So, and then once, once we detect, understand, now we could institute policy to reduce the inequities and essentially evidence-based intervention. Can the program be adopted? Can providers deliver it with fidelity? Will the program actually reach the intended populations and will organization sustain it over time? So the last thing I want to talk about with doing implementation research is the issue of building partnerships for health equity. And what I wanna talk about is community engagement. This slide shows the community engagement continuum. And we have community outreach, consult, involvement, collaborate, but we want to, we want to reach to the higher level of community engagement across this continuum. Um, we, we don't want to merely consult with the community. We want to have shared leadership with the community. Um, and essentially, uh, this slide shows a recent call for applications by apology for showing a call for proposals after the end date of February 19th. But what I want to um, uh, demonstrate is that this um, uh, TDR, um, uh, WHO oh, call for um, uh, uh, proposals is to identify good practices in engaging communities in research for implementation and in social innovation in low and middle income countries. And well, one, one of the topics was mapping of ethics review committee practices in relationship to the engagement of communities in research to enhance healthcare delivery. So essentially, what is the role of ethics committee in ensuring that there is adequate community engagement? Um, and uh, I want to bring up some thoughts from Jim Lavery, who also believes that we, we should have community engagement, but the partnerships with community needs to be fair. Fair partnership is a determinant of effectiveness of global health campaigns and implications for research ethics. Jim has a uh, very interesting point of view. He, he says that the dominant paradigm in research ethics is not sufficient for engaging communities. His, his concern is with the fact that the dominant bioethics or the dominant research ethics paradigm is um, to focus on protections 
for participants and it's too individualized, exclusive focus on individual research partnerships. He would like to see us move to a, a newer paradigm for research ethics that includes the dominant paradigm, okay, but also includes stakeholder engagement and in addition, fairness in research partnerships with the stakeholder engagement. And let me just um, borrow one or, one or two more minutes of my time to end up. So essentially, he wants to focus on who are the stakeholders, what are the interests of the stakeholders, and how do we engage with the stakeholder? And um, he, he says that we need to borrow the stakeholder theory from businesses. Who are the stakeholders? And the stakeholder theory is about how to create value for our stakeholders. And value is determined according to the specific interests of each stakeholder. So, and then what is fairness in research partnership? And he has this research fairness initiative filling a critical gap in global research ethics, essentially fair partnerships recognizes that partnerships are ethically significant. Uh, there is a challenge for realizing the full ethical potential of fair partnership lies in how to design fair partnership models and implementation strategy for their use. And so fair partnerships are about establishing fair terms of cooperation and collaboration between and among programs and stakeholders pursuing joint ventures or mutual goals. So the dominant paradigm a research ethics is silent on the importance of fairness as an ethical goal for the principal vehicle, meaning partnerships, through which global health research and implementation programs are delivered. And so we have stakeholder engagement and organizational learning, fair partnership, broker design, and knowledge co-production and let me let me end on a somewhat personal note and tell you that um, we have this WH grant for doing implementation research in Myanmar unfortunately due to circumstances that you all know about Myanmar this grant is on hold but this um, grant that we obtained was to strengthen community engagement to ensure effective and equitable implementation of strategies involving social vulnerable populations in response to COVID-19 in Myanmar, a qualitative study. Essentially, the goal was to develop community-based planning and implementation strategies to enhance communication of mitigation strategies towards viral transmission and improve equity and access to government provision of COVID-19 services. Our, abro our approach was to do interviews of key informants of community-based organization and civil societies, local villages and 
religious leaders and international NGOs to discover how to optimize current interventions and to discover new approaches to enhancing or decreasing, mitigating health inequities, and also to approach members of vulnerable groups to uh, uncover their needs and unintended consequences of COVID-19. And I hope one day we could follow through with this type of implementation research in Myanmar. So with that, let me say thank you very much for your attention.